Greetings. So my name is Jason Lang. I'm a pediatric pulmonologist at Duke University, and I really appreciate the invitation from Marco and the CDRC to speak about uh, an interesting project that we are uh, getting underway. So Marco asked us to just present, a, he was aware of an idea that we were developing, uh, and that is the repurposing of Montelukast uh, uh, for infants with bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And probably this group, group doesn't need me to tell them uh, about the need for better uh, therapies for patients. And I guess I wanna say that as a pediatrician, there are many instances where adults are really failing the needs of children um, because for many pediatric conditions, there really are either no or very few approved treatments. So as bad as, as it is in adults, uh, kids are often um, in a, a bit of a, a more different, difficult position uh, when they get sick. Uh, the majority of drugs given to neonates, for example, are used off-label uh, or the dosing is uh, really extrapolated from adult PK and PK, uh, PD data. An example uh, is bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Some pediatric conditions have the benefit of treatments and uh, dosing extrapolation when they're, uh, when the disease is also an adult uh, disease. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia, by definition, really doesn't have that uh, luxury. Um, it's a problem, especially, um, and so the problem of, of uh, few treatments is really a, particularly a problem uh, with BPD. Uh, it's the most common pulmonary sequelae uh, of premature birth. Uh, and in the neonatal intensive care unit where these uh, babies are taken care of, uh, it presents really as respiratory distress. Babies need to be on oxygen. Uh, usually they have to have uh, some form of mechanical ventilation at some point. And then if they do survive uh, the NICU and are discharged, most of these babies who develop bronchopulmonary dysplasia develop recurrent uh, lung issues, uh, infections, bronchitis, pneumonias, uh, chronic asthma-like symptoms. Uh, they have low lung function lasting for years. And we're more and more becoming to uh, understand that BPD is uh, really a risk factor for COPD in adulthood. It's caused by probably a variety of different things uh, in that early uh, newborn premature period, uh, but certainly includes the oxygen toxicity and mechanical trauma from mechanical ventilators uh, applied to the underdeveloped uh, and susceptible lungs of a premature infant. Uh, what it is is really the damage and tissue destruction of the small airways and the small air sacs uh, in the lung that lead to pulmonary edema, fibrosis, uh, infiltration of inflammatory cells throughout the airways and the lung parenchyma, and also bronchoconstriction. So some of these uh, sort of pathologic features are uh, somewhat similar to asthma and other um, chronic lung diseases uh, in older kids, and some are really distinct to, to BPD. But one thing that we do uh, know is that there's uh, a, an important factor is inflammation uh, in the airways and in the lung parenchyma. And this is just a recent review uh, figure kind of showing how oxygen and uh, mechanical ventilation trauma uh, with inflammation leads to injury and leads to bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So one example of an inflama uh, inflammatory um, molecule uh, that is present are leukotrienes. So leukotrienes are inflammatory molecules that are the result of arachidonic acid um, metabolism. Uh, and a release from inflammatory cells and can have widespread uh, inflammatory action throughout the lung. Uh, we do know that leukotrienes are elevated in infants developing BPD, and so suspect it probably also plays a role. Um, so bronchopulmonary dysplasia, unfortunately, there are no FDA-approved medications to treat uh, or prevent BPD. 
Uh, and there really are few evidence-based therapies. Um, I'm not a neonatologist myself, but working with many of them, I've learned uh, uh, the treatments that they, or the approaches that they use. Uh, one, uh, which has been shown to be somewhat helpful is systemic steroids, uh, because it can reduce the inflammation uh, and it can help with BPD, but it's really not routinely used uh, due to the fairly severe adverse uh, CNS effects. So it's, um, its use and its really ability to help babies uh, is limited because of those um, adverse effects. So new medications uh, that treat, that safely treat and prevent BBD really uh, are very much needed. So this led um, us to, to wonder about the repurposing of a very common medication, Montelukast, for BPD. So Montelukast uh, is the second most commonly prescribed chronic pediatric medication, at least in the US. It's used uh, really around the world. Uh, it blocks the action of leukotrienes by antagonizing the cysteinoleukotriene receptor 1. Uh, and it's already used off-label for a number of different pediatric conditions, uh, a number of allergic conditions, specifically chronic urticaria, eczema, esophageal, um, yeah, sorry, eosinophilic esophagitis, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, it's been shown to reduce the size of tonsils and adenoid tissue. It's used in a number of other uh, conditions related to cough and even uh, acute asthma management. Uh, although I should say there's data with that, but it's not uh, as commonly used as some of the others I mentioned. There is um, some evidence that Montelukast may be uh, helpful uh, in cardiovascular disease in adults. And also there's research uh, focusing on the neuroprotective effects of Montelukast for diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So, the way that Montelukast can be helpful is really uh, counteracting uh, the effects of the leukotrienes. So various inflammatory cells uh, in the lung, including eosinophils, mast cells, and others, uh, release leukotrienes. Uh, they uh, have action on various target cells uh, in the lungs and in the airways that are relevant to asthma, but as I mentioned in a previous slide, uh, can be also relevant to uh, BPD. So airway smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, which can affect uh, edema in the lung, mast cells, and other uh, circulating uh, pulmonary inflammatory cells, resulting in uh, bronchoconstriction, mucus uh, secretion, pulmonary edema, and inflammatory cell uh, migration. And this is just a cartoon kind of showing uh, this is with a bronchial asthma, um, but again, many of those features uh, are relevant to the formation of BPD. And Montelukast specifically blocks the uh, cysteinoleukotriene receptor 1. It uh, has full antagonism without any uh, agonistic effects. So what is Montelukast? It's Great name is Singular. Uh, it's been around now for more than 20 years. It was developed initially by Merck. And its current indications, uh, it's probably most widely used for chronic asthma. So it's currently approved 12 months and up in the US. Uh, it's given once daily in the form of a, an oral uh, a chewable tablet, a pill, or uh, oral granules. Um, so that's basically just once a day. Um, it can also be used sporadically for exercise-induced asthma. That uh, For that condition, it's approved six years uh, and up and can just be given uh, as needed two hours before uh, any planned exercise. And then it's also received approval for allergic, uh, either seasonal or perennial rhinitis. And that indication is all the way down to six months of age. Uh, and again, that's once daily. So its safety has generally been very favorable. Um, safety mainly from uh, studying uh, kids with asthma and rhinitis when given once a day uh, at night, the safety profile is really similar to placebo. Um, 
the safety down to age six months is uh, supported from data from PK safety and efficacy studies in children, uh, both with asthma and also uh, adult PK studies. Uh, there's been no sign of any growth impairment effects that have been seen uh, with other uh, chronic asthma medicines like inhaled steroids. And there are no uh, teratogenicity concerns following um, uh, animal model research and post-marketing. I should mention that there is uh, an FDA box warning related to uh, neuropsychiatric events. These have all been uh, in older children um, and adults, not in the population that uh, we're talking about in premature infants, but it is something that we need to remain uh, mindful of. Again, not in the current um, population. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about adverse events uh, in the younger uh, infants at risk for BPD in, in a future slide. So leukotrienes, I, I mentioned, can, uh, well, it, it's biologically plausible that leukotrienes specifically are a real factor in the promotion of BPD. Um, leukotrienes are produced in the setting of hyperoxia, which we know is a stimulus uh, for BPD and are associated with dysfunctional airway, uh, small airways development. And then in preclinical models, uh, uh, actually several of them uh, with hyperoxia as a stimulus, monoleucast has uh, been shown to reduce lung inflammation, um, oxidative injury, um, and montelukast improves lung function and surfactant protein production, which is, which is certainly important in the developing uh, neonatal lung. And again, leukotrienes have been shown to be elevated both in the airway and uh, the uh, alveolar fluid, and also the systemic circulation in infants developing uh, BPD. A nice thing in terms of potentially repurposing Montelukast is its easy dosing. So as I mentioned, it's given enterally. Uh, there's not currently a marketed IV product, um, but it it's, uh, should be fairly easily given even in newborns. Uh, that is because it's readily dissolvable uh, in water-based and water and water-based uh, liquids, including baby formula and breast milk, uh, as little as just a teaspoon. Uh, the four milligram dissolvable granule that you can sort of see there um, does dissolve nicely also in uh, baby food and, and, other, and other things. There are very few dosing interactions uh, and no dosing adjustments uh, really are needed for mild to moderate hepatic or renal insufficiency. So what is the evidence um, uh, for uh, Montelukast? with BPD. There, there isn't a lot of data, but I wanna just touch base on a couple of the studies uh, that have been done, because uh, I think they are uh, helpful in kind of planning uh, potential future studies. So the first one was published in 2009. This was in uh, South Korea, uh, a population of premature infants uh, that on average were 27 weeks gestational age and requiring both oxygen and uh, mechanical ventilation. And so we're really at high risk for, for having BPD. So they were given open labeled monoleucast at a dose of one milligram per kilo per day for 12 weeks. The control group, um, so this wasn't actually a randomized uh, blinded uh, controlled trial. Um, they used historical controls that were fairly well matched demographically and by disease severity. And these uh, researchers looked at um, safety by adverse events and also various measures of uh, various respiratory measures, including ventilator use, oxygen use, and uh, what's known as the ventilation index, which is a, a fairly good marker of overall respiratory um, uh, ability or uh, uh, their, their ventilatory status. And so, they were able to study 15 infants that received uh, Montelukast. All of those babies survived. There were no uh, serious adverse events and no reactions attributed to Montelukast. 
and there are no differences in the adverse events between um, the Montelukas treated babies and the historical controls. What they did find was the ventilation index uh, significantly improved. So that is, it went down uh, at the three and four week marks, um, uh, which was statistically significant. It wasn't clear why they didn't report, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, further out from the four weeks if they, they didn't have enough uh, infants. Uh, that wasn't really clear in the presentation. Um, and there was a non-significant, uh, I guess, change or improvement in the Montelukas versus the control groups where more of the Montelukas treated uh, infants were able to completely wean off of uh, off of oxygen, but that, that wasn't statistically significant. And again, we're dealing with 15 treated uh, infants. So the authors concluded that Montelukas at this dose of one mix per cake per day was well tolerated uh, in this population. And there was a suggestion of therapeutic benefit that should be confirmed uh, in a larger uh, randomized trial. So certainly agree with, with that. Um, the second study was published in 2014, uh, research conducted in several sites in Germany. Um, and this, uh, this group of researchers were focused on uh, sicker babies. Uh, babies born before 27 weeks gestational age uh, who had severe BPD. These babies were already on mechanical ventilators. Uh, they started the, the treatment period after 28 days of life. Excuse me. And they were included in the trial because they were deemed by the treating physician at having uh, less than a 50% chance of survival. Uh, the intervention uh, started, like I said, after 28 days, uh, and the target dose was two milligrams per kilo per day. Uh, this was a, a, a dose escalation. Week one was one, uh, week two was 1.5, and week three and beyond was two milligrams per kilo per day until the baby uh, improved uh, or was discharged. Uh, and again, the control group were match controls. Uh, there was not randomization, uh, and the outcomes were survival and time to discharge um, uh, as well. So they, again, uh, had a very small sample to look at, 11 treated babies and 11 controls. Uh, there were no uh, serious, serious adverse reactions. Uh, the survival did appear to be significantly improved in the Montelukas uh, treated babies, the survival being 91% versus 36% in the control group. Uh, as well, the ventilator time in the Montelukas treated baby was uh, significantly less, so uh, 41 days versus 104, uh, 104 days. Uh, in the controls and the preterm complication score uh, was also significantly better in the monolucas group. One interesting thing is that they also looked at, um, they also, <clears throat> excuse me, looked at uh, chest X-ray changes. And uh, I'm not sure how many radiologists we have uh, uh, in the group, but I will, it's okay, I will uh, walk us through this. In the top row, we see the Montelukas treated babies, uh, the bottom row being the control, uh, the leftward column is at the start of uh, treatment, and then uh, weeks four, and then six uh, six months. So in babies that have bronchopulmonary dysplasia, you really have uh, pretty severe patchy ground glass opacities, uh, and really a heterogeneous um, scarring uh, and fibrosis. And you can see this is more normal, where there is a darker kind of more uh, homogenous uh, pattern. Whereas down here in the control groups, there's continued worsening of uh, this patchy uh, pattern uh, that we see with BPD. So the authors concluded uh, based on their clinical observation, the statistical analyses, and considering uh, what they thought was a relatively low risk of the study drug that they recommend using monolucas uh, in severe cases of BPD in infants facing a high risk of death. 
And then lastly, uh, the, the third study uh, also uh, conducted in South Korea, published in 2015. This is a different, uh, both of the authors um, and the two Korean studies were Kim, although those were different researchers. Um, this group uh, were focused on uh, babies that were a little less sick. Uh, so these included babies up to 32 weeks gestational age and could be included if, if they were just requiring some oxygen after 14 days of life. They used a lower dose, so all the babies received less than one milligram per kilo per day. Uh, that continued until discharge, uh, or they got to 36 weeks gestational age. It was an open label, and they again looked at the incidence and severity of uh, the BPD at discharge. And they looked at other um, markers, such as uh, total adverse events for safety, ventilation index, um, use of ven uh, ventilation and oxygen, and also mean airway pressure, which is a measure of how much um, respiratory support a baby needs. So this was a slightly bigger study. They enrolled 83. They only, um, only 66 were included in the final analysis, although that's not really clear why. Um, uh, why that number was fewer, uh, that wasn't uh, really described that well. Um, the mean gestational age at birth was 27 weeks, and the mean age at the start uh, of the study was four weeks. The treatment groups were generally similar, um, and there were no differences in AEs between the treatment groups. Uh, unfortunately, they overall didn't see significant Montelukas effects uh, in their uh, main outcomes. Uh, there were a few trends, uh, generally all in favor of Montelukas. Uh, for example, the rate of uh, moderate to severe BPD was lower in the Montelukas group, uh, 43 versus 53%. The mean airway pressure at two weeks was improved in the Montelukas group, uh, which approached statistical significant, but uh, did not uh, ultimately was not statistically significant. And the rate of uh, being able to wean completely off ventilation uh, was higher in the Montelukas group, 20% uh, percent versus 10%. Percent. But again, uh, that didn't reach uh, statistical significant. Probably some issues with power here. Um, uh, to note. So the authors concluded that the monolucas was uh, well tolerated, but didn't show signs of reducing the risk of uh, moderate or severe BPD. The limitations of this study, uh, again, uh, low power to really detect treatment effects. Uh, they focused on generally milder patients that had a lower risk of developing BPD and they used a single dose that was uh, generally lower than the other two studies uh, that we looked at. So to summarize kind of all of the data, um, I guess I would say the entirety of the data really only includes 56 uh, monolucas treated babies. So it's hard to make bold conclusions. I guess uh, the question about if monolucas helps BPD, we, we really don't know. Uh, even though there's biological plausibility and perhaps some suggestion, uh, we really need to study this. Uh, there were no safety concerns noted in the, this population, uh, babies uh, either at risk or with BPD uh, from three trials. Uh, it seems that perhaps there was a more favorable treatment effect seen with the sicker infants and uh, the studies that had a slightly higher dose <clears throat> Excuse me, but because of the systemic inflammation, uh, the other issues with um, uh, babies being this sick, and the rapid organ development that occur occurs in premature infants, uh, all those may alter drug disposition, and then so optimal dosing is really unknown, and, and future studies really should collect uh, population-specific PK data. Uh, so that we can optimize dosing in the future. Uh, for example, a PK study with a, a dose escalating approach. Um, so a possible monolucas repurposing study might look like um, 
uh, a study focused on safety and pharmacokinetics uh, in premature infants uh, already with BPD. Uh, so sicker and also uh, clearly uh, clearly having BPD uh, with probably uh, dose variation. So a randomized placebo-controlled uh, double mass uh, dose escalating trial um, uh, of at least four weeks and probably a number of different sites. Uh, uh, we're thinking about at least 120 babies before uh, born before 29 weeks gestation uh, and recruiting at um, the babies at 32 to 40 weeks uh, postmenstrual age and requiring uh, supplemental oxygen and positive pressure ventilation in terms of the um, population. The assignment ratio could be three to one uh, with low, medium, and higher doses uh, to allow a range of exposures so we can understand what the best, um, uh, where we would have the best dose response, factoring in both efficacy and safety. And the primary outcome um, for this study would really need to still focus on safety uh, measured by the incidence of adverse events um, and then secondary out uh, outcomes being PK parameters uh, and BPD risk. So I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to present these, uh, these ideas and this potential uh, trial and the repurposing of monoleucast. Thanks so much.